Euronet Plus Panorama is a weekly review of European news broadcast by our network of EU radio stations. Hi there, welcome back to Euronet Plus Panorama. This week, we look at the EU's radical new agreement to procure ammunition bound for Ukraine, as broadcasters from around the Euronet Plus network consider, with some degree of concern, Vladimir Putin's latest nuclear threat. On Saturday, the 25th of March, the Russian president announced his intention to deploy tactical nuclear bombs in Belarus, a country now effectively considered a vassal state of Russia. The nukes would be positioned close to the border with Ukraine. The following day, both the EU and NATO condemned Putin's plan, with EU High Representative Josep Borrell warning that the EU would respond with sanctions should Minsk allow Moscow to carry through on the threat. Things went noticeably quiet for several days, but the Belarusian government did ultimately confirm the transfer on Tuesday saying that it was forced to take this step in response to years of unprecedented political, economic and information pressure from the US, the UK, NATO and the EU, as Belgian broadcaster RTBF reports. Renew Europe MEP Petras Austravicius takes all of this very seriously, says Lithuania's Ginio Radias. He believes that Vilnius should follow through on last summer's move to ban all transits across Lithuanian territory to and from Kaliningrad, the Russian exclave that lies between Lithuania and Poland, a move that proved controversial at the time. Ultimately, the European Commission waded in and told Lithuania to reopen rail routes connecting the exclave to mainland Russia although it could continue to block the transportation of sanctioned goods, including coal, steel, cement and high-tech products, by road. Kaliningrad has always received a huge proportion of its Russian supplies by rail. I'm convinced that we should react as firmly as possible, because to assume that this is, say, just another attempt to intimidate or something, well, it's not worth thinking like that. Our response should be both strong and very specific. One thing I would suggest the Lithuanian authorities think carefully about is restricting, essentially stopping, transits to Kaliningrad if such acts of nuclear blackmail from Russia, with the support of the Belarusian authorities, actually become a reality. Vladimir Putin has claimed that his Belarusian storage facility will be ready by July. This same month, Lithuania is to host a NATO summit, bringing world leaders, possibly including Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, flocking to Vilnius, which lies close to the Belarusian border. So, is Putin's timeline a coincidence? Laurinas Yonavicius, an advisor to Lithuania's foreign minister, thinks not. It's probably related. It probably has to do with the fact that they are also trying to influence the decision of the NATO summit itself to prevent maximally effective security-enhancing decisions. All of this is really part of a logical chain, which boils down to Russia's attempt to deter NATO, to deter the West, from making decisions that are not favourable to either Russia or Belarus. Poland, which also shares a border with Belarus, is pushing for another package of sanctions, says Polsky Radio, but this time one that specifically targets Belarus. At a meeting with his Romanian counterpart in Bucharest on Tuesday, Polish Premier Mateusz Morawiecki said that he is in close contact with other EU leaders on what such sanctions might look like. The step that Russia has decided to take, that is, the deployment of tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus, will definitely lead to Belarus being subject to additional sanctions and these sanctions will be significantly more painful for the Lukashenko regime. Morawiecki added that Poland is also considering the possibility of tightening its own policy towards the Lukashenko regime. Since we directly border Belarus, we are considering whether, within the framework of our bilateral relations, we should tighten the parameters of freight and passenger traffic, precisely to send a clear signal to Lukashenko that we will not accept any move that de facto serves Russia in its aggressive actions in Ukraine, as well as its aggressive attitude toward Poland and the rest of the European Union. Security expert Rainer Sachs 
the former head of Estonia's foreign ministry, tells Cuckoo Radio that the whole subject of nuclear weapons is a trigger for panic in Western society and urges calm. He believes that Moscow is playing on these fears to wage a battle of nerves, but that there is no additional military threat involved. Sachs states categorically that this latest threat will change nothing in Ukraine, but that it will serve to have a detrimental effect on Belarus by chipping away further at the country's already shaky sovereignty. The most important thing is that it reduces the independence of Belarus, which is already quite limited. It is yet another step towards taking control of Belarus. This is an important moment that must not be forgotten. Ukraine will not be deterred in any way, because Ukraine has no options anyway. They have said that they will continue fighting, regardless of what Russia is planning, because they have no alternative. In this context, the decision taken by 18 states at last week's EU summit to sign the European Defence Agency draft agreement for the joint procurement of ammunition is a sign that the EU will not be deterred by Moscow. The aim of the project, which will receive European Peace Facility funding, is to help member states replenish their ammunition reserves while continuing to support Ukraine. The agreement will also enable them to benefit from bulk discounts and avoid delays due to unexpected spikes in demand. This historic decision to finance and facilitate the supply of ammunition to Ukraine has sent ripples through the European community. And it was all set up in record time, as European Council President Charles Michel explains. President Zelensky made one thing very clear. To defend himself, Ukraine needs more weapons and more ammunition. We endorsed the decision on ammunition agreed by the 21st Council. We acted strictly. It took barely six weeks after Prime Minister Kallas proposed the idea, and when we tasked the High Representative with taking it forward. Our goal is to provide one million rounds of ammunition within the next 12 months. The European Peace Facility and European Defence Agency will help to get it done, and this joint EU initiative constitutes a major new step towards a genuine European defence. Since the summit, most other member states have now signed up, or are in the process of doing so. Spain, for one, signed on the dotted line on Wednesday, says S Radio. Latvia is also en route to joining the agreement, as Prime Minister Krishanis Karinsch explains. It is clear that Ukraine needs this ammunition right now, and all European and NATO countries also need ammunition because they are providing supplies to Ukraine from their own stocks, and these stocks need to be replenished. We can also assume that at least this year, but maybe for the next few years, Ukraine will need a lot more ammunition. Latvia's radio highlights that Riga will also be seeking to produce greater quantities of ammunition and military equipment at home. Likewise, Slovenian PM Robert Golob firmly backs the EU's commitment to supply Ukraine with ammunition and wants to ensure that this ammunition is not only purchased within the EU, but produced in the bloc too. RTV Slovenia shares his comments. The debate must move, and is already moving, towards establishing evenly distributed production within the EU, evenly distributed capacities, including geographically. Slovenia will be involved in the production side as well as in the purchasing side, and the goal is to make the former aspect truly European. This will continue to be our position. Bulgaria, though, is virtually on its own in showing no inclination to join the agreement. In the absence of a prime minister, President Ruman Radev has been representing the country. Despite the previous parliament clearly voting to provide assistance to Ukraine, Radev has found himself in the uncomfortable position of attempting to straddle the fence, lending just enough support to international initiatives to keep the EU off his back, while withholding support for Ukraine at home with Sunday's parliamentary elections in mind. So at last week's meeting in Brussels, Radev said that Bulgaria would produce shells for other member states,
but only on the condition that these shells do not reach Ukraine. We will commit to supplying our partners and allies with shells if they ask us to but not Ukraine. Is that clear? Bulgarian will not participate in this joint order of shells for Ukraine. Yet critics claim that Radev does not have the authority to impose this kind of condition. One such is former Prime Minister Ivan Kostov, who is speaking exclusively to BNR. With these statements regarding the European Defence Agency initiative to provide 2 billion euros worth of ammunition to Ukraine, the President has usurped power. He says, for example, that Bulgaria will impose the condition that the ammunition we produce for other countries does not reach Ukraine. Which Bulgaria is going to set this condition? Given that Parliament has obliged the executive twice, once on the 3rd of November and a second time on the 9th of December, to provide the necessary military equipment to Ukraine, he says he's defending the country's sovereign position, but he has no right to do so, as he is not the sovereign of this country. Brussels' hope is that this agreement will encourage member states to relinquish some of their own ammunition stockpiles to Kyiv without delay, safe in the knowledge that they will be reimbursed to the tune of up to 1 billion euros. The second billion mentioned by Ivan Kostov will then be put towards joint procurement. So that brings our Panorama podcast to a close. Make sure you come back next week for another look around the Euronet Plus network. (laughs) 